Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reacting to a horror story video, but not by Mr. Nightmare. Um, I got a comment saying that I should react to, or like if I, if I can react to um, Nightmare Files, which she also did, yeah, like can you react to the uh, channel Nightmare Files, very scary channel with stories and stuff, so I was like sure I'll check it out. I looked at the channel like right, right away and then I'm like ooh, like three disturbing true, kind of like Mr. Nightmare would do, right, like hitchhiking horror stories. And they're not that long, they're kind of, eight, like, he's kind of like another, another Mr. Nightmare, just nowhere near as many subscribers, obviously. 22,000, but I mean, even Mr. Nightmare was at 22,000 at some point, so I mean, I'll, I'll give it a chance, and then if his stories are good, then, yeah. And, and, and it's featuring nightmarish tales, so, yeah, I can react to a few of these, or, and I just shoveled snow, so I'm just trying to, like, relax a little bit, because, like, I, I get paranoid when I shovel snow, because, like, obviously, like, your heart and your back... And I don't want to affect any, any, anything like that, but, yeah, because this is our second snowstorm in just over a week, so, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so three disturbing true hitchhiking horror stories featuring nightmarish tales, and it's by the channel Night Nightmare something, Nightmare Files. So let's see if it's any good, and, uh, yeah, tell me if you guys have any other, you know, like comments that you want to, or ha have any other channels that you want me to react to, just like this, I'm gonna, like, check it out, and, yeah, let's go. Did not expect that. <laughs> Did not. Did not expect that at all. Okay. Well, this is kind of exciting. Kind of nervous. This didn't happen to me. It happened to my girlfriend. At the time, my girlfriend and I were attending college together. It was a smaller school and a pretty quiet place, so most of the students were from the area. My girlfriend, Katie, was from the area. I came from a distance, so I lived in the dorm at the college. Okay. Katie and I would hang out together in my dorm between classes, and even some evenings and weekends when we wanted to be together but didn't feel like going out. It was a Friday night and both of us, being pretty introverted, decided not to do anything crazy so we planned to spend the night in my room. Okay. She wanted some time to go home after classes and assured me that she'd be back around 8. Katie had a car but she never liked driving it, unless she had to pack around her instrument so she just usually took the bus. That Friday night, she had a pretty unnerving experience in doing so and it freaked both of us out. She was a small girl, definitely didn't look like a college age student. She was short, thin, and quiet. Standing alone at the bus stop in the dark was probably not ideal, but she preferred taking that over her own car. She Let's waited drive. for the bus stop, but then a van drove past her. Then again, then again, then again. Run. It looked like a creeper van, you know, those, Run. those vans that have no windows in the back. Well, those white vans? Those she was creepy. a bit suspicious, but told herself he was probably just lost or killing time. Mm -hmm. The van then pulled over right in front of the stop, and the driver rolled down his window very slowly. Trying to ride? Isn't it cold out here, he asked. The bus is always late. Hop in, and I'll give you a ride. Uh -huh. Katie declined politely and took a few steps back trying to show him there she wasn't go. interested in anything he wanted. Good. He asked again if she was absolutely sure that yes, she didn't sure. want to ride. Yeah, yeah, and he sure. drove away after she turned him down again. Okay, good. The bus arrived moments later. And she was relieved to step on. But to her horror, she then noticed the same van right behind the bus. She was the only one on the bus also. Oh, shit. The van followed the bus directly. And Katie texted me to explain the situation. I could tell that she was panicking, which isn't uncommon for her. I would be too. I offered to talk to her on the phone to calm her nerves, and she accepted. We talked about school and things to get her mind off of it. Once her stop came, she felt safe enough to hang up the phone. I, I walked a short distance to the college. I would still be on the phone. When she arrived at my room, she was hysterical. It took me over an hour to comfort her enough to get the story out of her. Shit, what happened? And this is what she told me. The van had stopped following the bus after getting stuck at a red light, giving the bus a chance to get ahead. However, 
After getting off at her stop, the van sped up to her. He was driving like a maniac at this point, going at least 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. The bus had already pulled away when the van pulled up right next to her. Shit. And had pulled over right where she intended to go to to get to the college. So in panic, she bolted the other way. Okay. Then a driver raced after her. What the When she turned her head to look behind her, she noticed he was holding a large butcher knife waving it in front of him in her direction. She did a wide turn to get back on track to the college, the man following close right behind her. Lucky for her, he lost his footing on an icy patch on the road. And oh, thank his God. delayed him enough for her to get away. Oh, thank God. When he got back up, he didn't chase after her again, but instead yelled out, I will find you, and I will kill you. Since then, she's always taken her own car instead of the bus. Yeah, damn right. Like, if you have a car, that's why you have a car, right? To drive. Like, if I had a car... Excuse me? Okay, so I'll just start this by saying my dad's a character. All of my friends loved him growing up because he could entertain you just by talking to him. This attitude is what initially led me to question the legitimacy of this story for a long time. Now that I'm a bit older, I could tell this one cuts deep every time we make him tell it. Usually, he talks in a very upbeat and active tone. But when my brothers and I first heard him tell this story, or talk about it in general, his tone completely changes. It's as if the color just rushes from his face. It's obvious he doesn't enjoy talking about it. Okay, go on. Okay, now to the story. Finally. <laughs> he was about 18 at the time. From pictures, he seemed like an athletic, approachable teen. He was living in the Gary Whiting area of Northwest Indiana. Sometime later in the evening, my dad, who's been a smoker for roughly 50 years of his life, decided to hitchhike to his local convenience store. He has a knack for talking about places or events as if you were there. This was an odd thing to do, considering the shop was only a couple of miles away from his house. Eventually, a truck pulls to the side of the road. It was a baby blue pickup truck, to be exact. Apparently, there were two men in the truck, probably both in their 40s or so. Oh God. Pretty normal looking. He said that the driver was a bit burly, and sort of looked like Jackie Gleason. The truck was only a three-seater, so the man in the passenger side had to move to the middle. Oh. No words spoken, apart from the driver asking where he was going. This didn't strike my father as odd, so he proceeded to sit in silence, not suspecting anything. Suddenly, out of nowhere, one of the guys randomly burst into laughter. According to my father, this wasn't your ordinary laugh, but something much more diabolical. Like an evil, like... Surely enough, the driver looks at my father, with what he claimed was the devil's eyes now chiming in with the laughter. Like a drunk. As you could suspect, they start to go a different route. My dad knew they weren't heading anywhere near the desired destination. He was trying to play it cool, wait for his chance. Luckily, a couple of minutes later, they finally hit a red light. Wait, so he got in the, the car? The driver slowly crept his arm across the cab and starts caressing my dad's neck. I guess fight or flight kicked in, and a surge of adrenaline came about. He unlocked the door and bolts out, not looking go. back. I didn't even know he went in the car. He said he hid near a local church and watched as they drove around looking for him. Some he years later, got in. my dad was watching the news when the mugshot of a man popped on the screen. His heart sunk. It was the driver. The man was undoubtedly the same who had picked him up hitchhiking. That man was John Wayne Gacy. Okay. Who, who the hell's that? Anyway, I didn't even... I did not even know he went in the car. Like, when did he say I went in the car? And then and then he's like, at a red light, I stopped. When I was like, 17, I didn't have a driver's license. Most of the time, I walk or hitchhike. I'm 19, I don't have a driver's license. one night. I walk or bus. In the road, and it was very cold. And this man pulled over. When the guy pulled over, I, I took a good look at the guy and figured I could take him if he tried anything. Mm. 
He was on the slender side and had a strange frailness about him, even though he looked healthy enough. I got into the car after we agreed on the destination. Okay. We exchanged names and I warmed my fingers up in front of the heating vent. He spoke quietly, asking a few questions along the lines of, was I local and how did I like living there? He said he'd only been here for a few months, but found it beautiful and hoped he could find happiness there. That comment struck me as a little odd, but I brushed it off. It began to snow and the road quickly got slippery. So he slowed and he kept his eyes straight out the windshield, driving silently. Okay. I was okay with that, as small talk was never my forte. About 10 minutes later, I noticed a car near the intersection we were approaching seemed to be sliding, so I said, watch out. He immediately hit the gas, shooting through the intersection and burst out with, don't ever scream at me. Needless to say, I was taken aback. Okay. I said, look, this is close enough, just pull over here and I can get there. Yeah. He didn't seem to hear me. Or he ignored so I you. I said, Richard, did you hear me? I said, you can pull over here and let me out. But no response. He's not going to he let you out. He just stared straight ahead, driving faster now than he did when it started snowing. Yeah, he's not going to let you to out. To say I was scared doesn't seem to cover the death of the fear that began to rise in me. I didn't know if I should stay quiet or speak but I was damn sure not going to yell after his outburst. After about a mile, he began to mumble under his breath. I couldn't quite make out what he was saying. I don't know what you're doing this But situation. I assumed he was speaking to me. So I said, what did you say? I couldn't hear you. He began to speak quietly and rapidly, saying things like, you're always yelling at me. I've told you time and time again, do not yell at me. I don't you told me once. It. You told me once. Oh, you know, listen, you don't listen. And I was just sitting there looking at him. I was at a complete loss. I didn't know what to say in response drunk or high or something. if I should say anything at all. I contemplated just jumping out of the car, but next that idea when I realized the door lock was missing. Shut there you. was just a silver lined hole where it should have been. I started to cry and debate with myself about causing an accident by grabbing the wheel and hoping for the best. Oh shit when he suddenly looked at me for the first time since I had gotten in the car. He blinked several times, rapidly, like, then slowed the car, pulling into a gas station. I waited to see if he unlocked the doors, not wanting to say anything to set him off again. Yeah. After a minute or two, he quietly said, I think I better let you out of here. Yeah, damn right you and should. he hit the button to the door locks, and he opened the door. I wasn't about to hesitate, so I jumped out of the car as if I were on fire. Yeah. I was about to turn and walk into the gas station when he called my name. He looked so damn want? sad and I hesitated. He apologized, said he was sorry if he had frightened me, uh -huh. that he never would have harmed me. Uh -huh. And he asked if I'd be able to get home okay. I said I would and closed the door. Yeah, I'll be fine. You can go. <laughs> he began to pull out of the gas station, but stopped suddenly. Oh, God. What he just sat there for a couple of moments, his head down. I froze, wondering what the hell was up. Yeah, well, I was right. about to run into the gas station, but he opened his window and yelled at me, waving something in his hand, my hat. I left it on his seat. Oh, shit. I slowly approached the side of his car, and he handed it to me, apologizing again. Okay. I didn't know what else to say, so I just said, thanks. Yeah. I watched as he drove off, making sure he was out of sight before moving on, so he wouldn't know which direction I was heading. Yeah. As I walked, I went to put my hat back on, and a piece of paper fell out of it. Oh, God, what are you Folded into a paper was a $100 bill. The paper said, I'm sorry. Please take a cab and don't hitchhike anymore tonight. I didn't. In fact, it was the last time I ever hitchhiked in my life. Will never, ever do that again.
after I saw that last one, I'm kind of having mixed feelings because the guy seemed creepy. The guy I thought was he was gonna kill him, and then he ends up giving him a hundred dollars, saying don't hitchhike ever again. Which I mean, that is good. Like that's good advice. But the last two people that went in the car, they already fucked up. Like that's their fault. Like they shouldn't know hitchhiking. No. Like I'll be terrified to do that. Like yeah, do you want to come in? Yeah, sure. Like no, you're gonna die. Like how do you even do that? You know what I mean? Like unless you're in, like a really 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 bad situation in which you need a car. But like. I still wouldn't do that. That's so cre cre creepy. Like, you're not another person. I could be a killer. I mean, it was nice of him to apologize, but like, why didn't he say, oh, like, you shouldn't have yelled at me? Or, like, stop yelling at me. Like, you're, like, you're not listening to me. And then, like, he he's lucky that he let him out. Like, he's lucky that he was that type of driver to not, like, kill him. I was kind of worried when he said, oh, I was going to put my hat back on. I was like, what's in the hat? Like, I, I, I really got sus suspicious. But then he said a $100 bill. I was like, say what? Say what? Yeah, you know, I'm tired of stuff. Like I don't know. But don't hitchhike. Do not get in the car. The first girl that was not her fault. But I mean, if she has a car, then she can. Like it's kind of all these people's faults, to be honest. Like the first girl should 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 have just taken her car. I don't know why the hell you you would bust when when you can have one when you have a car right there. Um. And then the last two guys, they went in the car. They shouldn't have, and that's basically it. It's kind of their fault, but I mean, I'm glad they made it out okay, but... The first girl really has to watch out, and she definitely has to, like, keep her eyes open for that van, because that... White van's creepy the hell out. Like, it's so creepy. Ugh, white van. Like, even, like, when I picture it in my head and I just say white van, I'm like, nope, I'm not going anywhere near that shit. Nope. Anyway, I'm glad they're okay. I'm sure they've learned a lesson. No more hitchhiking, and hopefully no one else hitch hitchhikes, because it's not safe. Just to get an Uber, get a cab, get a freaking I don't know, like, take, take a bus or something. Just don't hitchhike. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's all you gotta do. Anyway, so, like, for my first time watching Nightmare Files, it's pretty good. I already did did, did subscribe and put my post notifications on prior, just so I could, like, also get notifications for it. I might react to some of his other videos. Not now, not tonight, but, you know. You know, if I'm bored one day and I don't have any videos, then, yeah, you know, I can... And then again, let me know if there's any other, like, UD, like horror YouTube channels that they want me to react to. Because I actually quite like these horror stories. My friend Lexus got me into them. And, yeah. So, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more, I'll like it, comment, subscribe, comment if you, want, if you want more of these videos. If you want me to react to more of these. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.